Welcome to the program today. My name is Manu Gonzalez here in studio with Dr. Dave Reagan. We're going to be discussing uh, one of his most recent books called America's Suicide. And before we do that, I want to remind everybody who's watching by television that uh, we have a tremendous presence uh, through all of our different uh, media platforms. I want to remind you of that because some of you, you know, don't see some of the other stuff that we're doing. We do a lot of content through our YouTube channel as well as you go to prophecywatchers.com. You can f download our app. You can find us on Roku, certainly on Facebook. So we just want to remind everybody that we probably do three times more content than what you might see on television. And so you don't want to miss any of the other stuff that we're doing. So take a look over there. But Dr. Reagan, welcome. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. I tell you, this is my first trip to your new uh, studio and it's just marvelous. Yeah, there's a lot happening here. Lord's really been blessing you guys. Yeah, it's, it's been great, you know, with this particular new studio. It's <laughs> been fun. It's kind of been to where I've been uh, doing a lot of the interviews and stuff, but good times. Well, I, I have uh, fond memories of the previous studio in a home where we would get maybe two minutes into the program and a garbage truck would come by and we have to stop start <laughs> over because of the noise and all. Yep. So this is a real blessing. Yeah, it's been amazing to see what, what God has been doing and uh, preparing all this and, and just the reach that we're being able to do. Yes. Certainly, as you know, I mean, you, you led Lamb Lion. Kind of, well, for that, for those that might not know you, kind of talk a little bit about what you've been doing and, and uh, well, over the past. Well, I was a professor of international law and politics for 20 years and then in 1980, I felt the call of the Lord to give up my academic career and step out in faith, the scariest thing I ever did in my life, and form this ministry. And it was very difficult to form a ministry in 1980, unless you know you were a well-known person of some sort, but I wasn't. And uh, today, if you have something to say, you can form a ministry almost overnight because of the internet. But we didn't have the internet for 15 years, not until 1995 did we have access to it. So. I wandered around there in the, uh, going from one little country church to another for a long period of time and uh, before the ministry was able to really take off and I get known. But anyway, I, I served in, as the leader of that ministry for 41 years and we were on the radio for about 20 years and then we were on TV for about 21 years. And uh, in June of last year, June of 2020, I, uh, I decided that the time had come for me to step aside after 41 years of leading that ministry. And uh, so I stepped aside and turned it over to Colonel Tim Moore, who is now the director. And I moved my office to my home mm -hmm. so that I wouldn't be involved at all in any aspect of leadership of the ministry. And I am focused now on doing two things, writing books and writing articles for our magazine. So I'm still a part-time uh, employee of the ministry, but I'm at my home writing. And I've been writing like mad since last year. I've written three books. Uh, one on America's suicide, another one on uh, millennial uh, concepts, and the third one, which is at the publisher now and should come out any day, is one on Islam and Christianity, subtitled "Are they the same? Are they roads to the same God?" Mm. And of course, we're saying no. Uh, so I'm, I've already started on a fourth one now. So I've been really busy uh, ever since I quote quote retired. Yep. <laughs> that's the way it is, you know. And, and if you're thinking about, I'm glad you bring up America because. It's most of the, the time we get so many questions. People want to know naturally, especially here, um, what's America's future? Is America yes. in prophecy? You know, what's going to happen to us? Are we going to be there? You know, is America mentioned? What's the end game? If we're not, why? And so you're, this, this book, America's Suicide, uh, kind of give us the background because you had, this is kind of maybe like a third edition, second edition, kind of give a history of how you came to this current edition. Yes. Well, I... Uh I had, this has been one of the focuses of my ministry ever since it began. And uh, I became even more focused on it uh, in 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to go to Russia and uh, minister in St. Petersburg and in Moscow. And when I got to Moscow, I could not believe my eyes. There were hundreds of thousands of people in the streets. Uh, the place had completely collapsed socially, economically, whatever. There was nothing in the stores, no food, no clothing, nothing. The big stores were empty. And people had, they had card tables on the street and they were trading. It was a barter economy. So they would trade blue jeans for milk or whatever. And I was just astonished. And the Lord really spoke to my heart as I was watching that. And He said, David, I want you to go back and I want you to proclaim this to America. I want you to tell the people of the United States of America 
that this is nothing compared to what's going to happen to your nation because I have blessed your nation more than any other nation in all of history and you are turning your back on me and shaking your fist at me. And he said at least these people for the last 70 years did not have churches, they did not have mm -hmm. Bibles, they, they were persecuted. You've got a church on every corner in America, you've yeah. got Bibles in every home, you've got radio evangelists, TV evangelists, you have no excuse, none whatsoever for your rebellion against me. So I came back and began to preach that. And I want to tell you, it was a very unpopular message. People didn't want to hear it. They said, you know, you're doom and gloom guy, and we don't want to hear that. Uh, I came to the conclusion that many American Christians think that God is sitting on the throne draped in an American flag, and that He would never, ever touch this country and never pour His wrath on this country. And so one of the things I do, uh, I, I wrote several books uh, during that time, several editions of a book called America the Beautiful Question Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I decided to bring all that up to date with this one called America Suicide because I believe we've reached the point where we have decided that we're not going to have anything to do with God. You know, people say, well, in the past, America has often grown cold with God, and there's been cold periods, and then there would be great revivals that would come. And, and that has happened over and over. And there are many who are teaching right now that we're, that's going to happen again. And it may. But my point in this book is that I don't think it will because we're not cold about the Lord anymore. We are in open rebellion against God, shaking our fist at God. As Jerry Nadler, yeah. chairman of the Judiciary Committee in the House of Representatives said recently, who cares what God has to say about anything? Yeah. That's where we are in this nation. Romans chapter 1 says that when a nation that has been blessed by God begins to rebel against God, that God will step back and lower the hedge of protection. And it says the first thing that will happen is a sexual revolution. That occurred in this country in the 1960s. It says then that if the nation refuses to repent, God will take a second step back, lower the hedge further, and turn the nation over to depraved minds. And Mondo, that's where we are. I, every day I think it can't get worse. It gets worse. It gets worse and worse. I mean, we, we, we don't even know whether we're men or women today. What is the gender of a child? They don't know. They're, they're taught that there's 72 different genders. It goes on and on, the insanity that's going on in this nation today. You know, when you, it's interesting because, you know, when you think about Romans chapter 1, if you, if you see three times there that God gives them up, God gives them up, God gives them up, and not only do they become debased in, in really in their hearts, but they become debased in their mind. The very faculty of thinking yes. is affected. Yes. You think we're there? I think we're there. Uh, you know, uh, I did a lot of study of prophetic voices in America. And um, I wrote a book about that, God's Prophetic Voices to America. And in that book I pointed out that one of the great preachers in America was Peter Marshall who came to this country from Scotland, and uh, he just took the country by storm. He was the Billy Graham of the early 20th century. And most people don't even know about him today, but uh, he was really something. And uh, he had a tremendous way of preaching, and he became the preacher of the President's Church in Washington, D.C. He became the chaplain of the, of the Senate. But he gave a speech, a sermon, to a church in Los Angeles in 1945, while the war was still going on, early in 45, And he said, this nation is headed in the wrong direction. He said, we are caught up in materialism, we're caught up in racism and so forth. And he said, when this war ends, there is going to be a dam that will break, and that dam will be the, the pent up uh, uh, obsession of people to buy things. They have not been able to buy anything for the Great Depression mm -hmm. and during the war. And he said, we are going to become the most materialistic na nation on planet Earth. And he said, what this nation needs is a prophet. We need a prophet who will call this nation to repentance before it's too late. Well, people thought he was nuts. But you know what? That was in 1944. I'm sorry, sorry, 45, 44. Exactly uh, what, 20, uh, 40, 50, 60, 30 years later, in 1974, in 1974, God raised up four prophetic voices here in the United States calling this nation to repentance and warning this nation that if they did not repent, He was going to pour out His wrath. The first was David Wilkerson in his book, The Vision. The second was Francis Schaeffer in his movie and his books uh, that he wrote during that time. Uh, a third one was Don Wildman of the American Family Association. All mm -hmm. these in 1974. And the fourth was Alexander 
Solzhenitsyn, which most people didn't know about. I mean, he, he was, had won the Pulitzer Prize, uh, not the Pulitzer Prize, the Nobel Prize. Russia had kicked him out. He had wandered around Europe. He finally settled in Vermont. And in 1964, he began to speak out about America. And in 1968, he went to Harvard University and give a commencement speech, and, and they welcomed him as a great hero. This was the man who stood against communism, yeah. a great hero. He left a pariah. They booed him during that speech because he got up and he said, let me tell you something. I have asked all of my grandmothers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers, what went wrong in Russia? Why did we have 70 years of communism? And they all gave me the same answer. Men forgot about God. And he said, that is where America is today. You have forgotten about God. You have given your soul to money. You are a materialistic nation. And he said, materialism will do nothing in the world but, but uh, slavery to you in the terms of being enslaved to more money, more money. And it will bring uh, sorrow to you. And you need to repent. And he went through what was going on in movies, what was going on in music, what was going on in the media and the press and everything. And people booed him and he became a pariah. But God raised up those four voices and He's raised up many since then to call this nation to repentance. Because when God is going to pour out His wrath on any nation that He has greatly blessed, He always does two things. He sends prophetic voices to warn them and He sends remedial judgments yeah. to reinforce the prophetic voices. And He has sent remedial judgment after remedial judgment. The Vietnam War, I believe, was a remedial judgment on this nation. The Hurricane Katrina was a remedial judgment. These were time. How do you know a remedial judgment? You know it by the, the impact of it. You know it by the timing of it. Take, take uh, Hurricane uh, Katrina, for example. Mm -hmm. That hurricane formed almost overnight in the Gulf of Mexico. Most hurricanes form in the Atlantic and move across. No, this one formed almost overnight in the Gulf of Mexico. And it formed at the very time that we were forcing Israel to leave the Gaza Strip, forcing people out who had lived there for years and years they had to move their cemeteries. They had to move their homes. They had to leave their businesses behind. They dragged them out of there. And we, we were forcing Israel to do that. And it hit New Orleans at exactly the day that the annual homosexual festival was to begin that drew about 200,000 homosexuals from all the United States. There's nothing accidental about that kind of timing. So we've had both the, the prophetic voices and we've had the remedial uh, judgments. And this nation has continued to rebel against God. It's, uh, I, I just think that we are at the point where we're shaking our fist at God and we're saying we're going to do what we please and you're not going to do anything about it. I want, I want to talk more about that after the break because uh, when you think about all the current events that are happening right now, one of the things that, that we do here is we produce a monthly magazine to talk about these current events to see what God is doing and how God is interacting and what the prophetic future holds. So you, we're going to take a little break here. You can see how you can get our magazine. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Bob Ulrich, Gary Stearman's partner and the co-founder of Prophecy Watchers. I would love to tell you how you can become a subscriber to our wonderful Prophecy Magazine, creatively named The Prophecy Watcher. And ready for this? How you can get eight powerful Prophecy DVDs as a free bonus for subscribing today. Every day, the ancient prophecies of the Bible get more and more exciting as we watch world events come into perfect alignment with the words of the ancient prophets. Examine the pre-trib rapture doctrine taught by the Apostle Paul. Come to a deeper understanding of the giants of Genesis 6 and the real reason for the flood of Noah. Read the shocking things we see coming out of the world of science and technology, mind-blowing advances in transhumanism and artificial intelligence. Keep a close eye for a series of wars coming very soon to the Middle East. The Bible's a supernatural book, and we enjoy covering the fringe subjects and dark corners of Scripture as well. UFOs, the Nephilim, the miracles of the Bible, and so much more. It's a one-of-a-kind publication full of articles that will make you a Bible prophecy expert and prepare you for the future. We have a very special subscription offer for you today. For your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you can subscribe to either the digital version or the print version of our magazine. And here's the best part. In addition to receiving 12 monthly issues of the magazine, this offer comes with a fantastic bonus. Eight DVDs from some of the leading prophecy experts in the world today. Eight DVDs plus 12 issues of the magazine represents a $200 value. 
but it's available today for your gift of just $50 or more to support the work of Prophecy Watchers. This offer is available anywhere in the USA and will ship both the magazine and the DVDs absolutely free. Don't wait or hesitate. Call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Looking at the future through the lens of Bible prophecy is the entire focus of this ministry. We're motivated like never before by our desire to tell the world that Jesus is the only answer for these troubling times. And we do believe that he's coming back very soon, just as he promised. Partner with us today. Help us take God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole world. Let's, let's go back and some of the things you were talking about, you are talking about uh, judgment and judgment on nations. I mean, uh, what I hear often in the today's culture is, you know, you're talking, the way you're talking is like the God of the Old Testament. The God of the Old Testament was a God of wrath. The God of the New Testament is a God of grace. And, and I've heard that through the years pastoring, and I go, hey, you know, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, our God is a consuming fire. It's a fearful thing <laughs> in chapter 10 to fall into the hands of a living God. Let's address that because it's not politically correct today, even in the church, Absolutely. crying out loud, to speak about a God who actually judges sin. Is, is God holy or is He just grace? It's, it's difficult to hear the word sin in churches today. Yeah. It's bad decisions. <laughs> It's not yep. mistakes. Yep. <laughs> well, anyway, <clears throat> yes, I'm so glad you brought that up, Mondo, because that is so important. I hear it over and over, even from pastors. I hear it. The God of the Old Testament was the God of wrath. The God of the New Testament was God of grace and love and mercy, and and that's not the same God. Malachi says God never changes. The book of Hebrews says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God of the Old Testament is the God of today. Uh, yes, we uh, know more about His grace and love and mercy than they did in those times, but He is still a God who is going to deal with sin. John 3.36 is a verse about that that most people don't know. They know John 3.16, exactly. but they don't know John 3.36, which is from the uh, sermon by John the Baptist where he said, every person on planet earth is either under the grace of God or the wrath of God. That's how God deals with sin. You're either under grace or you're under wrath. One of the two. Yeah. Yes, he, he is slow. He is patient. Oh, He is so patient. And I'm so glad because he had to be very patient with me in my life. But the fact is that he is going to deal with sin. I think the average person thinks of God as the great cosmic teddy bear who yeah. is big and soft and furry. Santa and when they stand before him, he's going to put his arm around them and say, Well, I know you never accepted my son as your Lord and Savior. And I know, you know, you were on drugs and alcohol and all this sort of thing. But uh, you were so much better than the guy down the street from you. Yep. So you come on into my kingdom. And that's what people think of God. They think God grades on the curve. And they think that because they can find somebody worse than them, that that means they're going yep. to heaven. You know, I was out, and my wife and I were in New Mexico recently, and we listened to a sermon on Sunday morning by uh, Heitzig, who is, the, uh, uh, yeah, who is the pastor of the Calvary Chapel there in Albuquerque. And he made a comment that I really caught my ear. I wrote it down immediately. He said, Good people do not go to heaven. Saved people yep. go to heaven. A big difference. Yep. I mean, that, if, you, if you're listening, this is the essence of the gospel. I mean, we know that all have sinned and fallen short. I mean, again, there's no curve. One of the challenges that we see is that Scripture teaches that to go to heaven, you have to be perfect. And you go, well, what? <laughs> yeah, you qualify? Nobody qualifies, but Jesus was. And through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross... We get His righteousness imputed to our account, and our sin gets imputed to Him, and therefore there is this exchange. But people, it's so often they forget yeah. the nature of the gospel itself. And, and one of the things that you do here, I mean, let's talk a little bit about why do you call it America's suicide? Because you, 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 you go through America's history and the warnings, but why, why America's suicide? Yes, I, I start out the book by telling about our great Christian heritage, mm -hmm. which progressives deny today. They yep. say it doesn't even exist. Well, it does exist. And there's evidence everywhere of it. And then I talk about America's rebellion and how we are rebelling against God, how we are pushing His Word aside, we're mocking Him. And uh, I talk about the America that I grew up in and how totally, radically different it is from the America today. I was born in 1938. And, uh, you know, uh, we went to church three times a, a week on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, and nothing was scheduled in the secular community on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, or Wednesday evening. 
Everything was closed on Sunday except the most essential things like a pharmacy or a service station. That was all that was open. It would have been unthinkable to have anything else open. I, I, I grew up in a whole different world. I talked to young people about this. They can't even believe it. They think I was dropped in from another planet. <laughs> but that's the way America was. And we, we respected uh, uh, morality. Uh, we didn't have the, the violence that we have today. They're talking about, well, the violence is due to this, it's due to that, it's due to that. Violence today is due to the lack of moral teaching. Yep. When I was a senior in high school, uh, in 1956 I was a senior in high school, our English reader was Bible stories with a moral. And we had, you know, prayer every day, we Pledge of Allegiance, all this, and we kicked God out of the schools, and our schools simply deteriorating. Yeah. And we're having uh, violence everywhere. You know, it, we, what we have today is we have moral pygmies who yeah. are shooting each other over tennis shoes. Yeah. I mean, th th this is, this is if, if you're listening, again, we're, we're reminded of what God is doing. And what Dr. Reagan has done in here is given us kind of a history, certainly, uh, of, of America's foundation, of its process, of how, how, of how it's come to the certain point that we are now. The question is, is there hope for America? Yes. And we're, we're going to take a little break here. You can see how you can get uh, Dr. Reagan's book. Prophecy Watchers has enjoyed the privilege of working with Dr. David Reagan for many years. His message, as you've heard today, is not meant to entertain or please the masses. The Old Testament prophets were not exactly popular either, but they were used by God to warn the people of Israel of things to come. Sadly, their warnings were ignored, and God's chosen people were scattered to the four corners of the earth almost 2,000 years ago. Dr. Reagan's convicting book, America's Suicide, is available through our ministry for your gift of $25 or more, with shipping included anywhere in the USA. David has also written two other encouraging books, God's Prophetic Voices to America, which features chapters by Franklin Graham, Jan Markell, Bill Koenig, David Jeremiah, Jonathan Kahn, and Robert Jeffries. The third book, Living on Borrowed Time, The Imminent Return of Jesus, explains the rapture of the church and shows you how you can spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. If you've never read any of David's books or heard him preach, you are in for a real treat. He is a one-of-a-kind evangelist who has been given a gift by God. His writing and preaching has blessed so many people, and we want to make you a wonderful offer today. When you place an order for Dave's new book and his two other life-changing books, we're going to send you three bonus DVDs that share three of Dr. David Reagan's best prophetic messages. The three books and the three bonus DVDs are available for your gift of $60 or more with free shipping anywhere in the USA. Just call the toll-free number on the screen 24-7 or visit our bookstore online at prophecywatchers.tv. We believe that time is short. We must dedicate the time we have left to winning the lost through the message of salvation through Jesus Christ alone and His free gift of salvation to all who call upon His name. Will you help us take that message to a lost world today? I, I really hope you get Dr. Reagan's book. I, I enjoyed really the clarity. Oftentimes what you see today is you get a lot of fluff in different ways, but you, you have provided a... Uh, a clarion call here, a biblical call to not just America, but every single nation. You compare it with biblical history, the nation of Israel, which is a great pattern. Um, talk, if you will, the question that often is, is, well, is America doomed? And what do we do about it? Is there hope? What's our goal? Are we here to save America or to save Americans or to save people? What's we're here to get, preach the gospel to people. Yep. That's what we're here for. Yep. And the failure of the church to do that is one of the reasons we are in the terrible situation that we're in today. Because the church has gotten way off into uh, social gospel yep. and claim it here, you know, claim it and name it gospel and all that kind of stuff instead of the gospel, which is what will change people and change the yep. world. Uh, but this, yes, there's hope. First of all, we have the hope of the rapture. What mm -hmm. a glorious hope that mm -hmm. is. You know, Adrian Rogers who was a great preacher in Memphis, Tennessee. 
He made a statement that the average Christian cannot understand because they don't know anything about Bible prophecy. His statement was this, the world is growing gloriously dark. How can you say that? Because the Bible says, Jesus says, I will return at a time when the world is like it was in the days of Noah. Yep. And you go to uh, Genesis 6 and look at it, what was it? Violence and immorality. And we've got violence and immorality everywhere today. It is a sign that all the signs have come together. They've converged. We're living on borrowed time. Jesus is coming yep. soon. So we have the hope of the rapture. We have the hope of the gospel. People can still be saved. They can still be transferred from the wrath of God to the grace of God by putting their faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. There's all kinds of hope in that regard. Mm -hmm. For our nation, I don't see much. I mean, when you, when you look at where we're going, and I appreciate, you know, many of you who are watching, you, you probably hear this. Um, there's, there's these people, so-called prophets, that are prophesying revival in the land, revival in the land. Now, granted, um, I want revival in the land. I would sure. love it. I have a lot of family members that still don't know the Lord. I'd love to see revival in there. But this idea that America is going to be uh, won over and we're going to have this glorious age, again, all things are possible. But when we look at the prophetic scenario of all of the things, um, extremely highly unlikely. Well, Mondo, you know as well as I do, we are living in the end times. We are, yep. The, all the signs have converged. There is not one prophecy in this Bible about a revival in the end times. Yeah. None. Not one. Yeah. It's all about the deterioration yeah. of society and apostasy in the church. Yeah. And that's where we are. But the age of Laodicea, are we yeah. not there? Yeah. That's, that's exactly where we are. And so our hope is Jesus Christ. He's the only hope we have. There's no politician who's going yeah. to turn this nation around. They can't do it. Only Jesus can. Only the church. Only people on their knees praying. And the possibility of that is slim. And, and the reason is because the Bible teaches that there is a turning point, a turning point. And it's called when the wound becomes incurable. Yeah. And that term is used over and over. It's used toward Judas, used toward Nineveh. It's, uh, it's used over and over. And what that means is when a nation sets its jaw against God and says, that's it, we're, yeah. we're not going to have anything to do with you, the wound becomes incurable. Jeremiah was told not to pray for Judah. He was. Ezekiel was told not to pray for Judah. He said, even if Moses and, and uh, Job, uh, you know, the most righteous yeah, men ever, Samuel, it, even if they, it would only uh, help their family, but yeah. it would not help the society because it's that far gone. So we need to realize how serious the situation is. We need to realize that we're living on board time. We need to realize that we need to proclaim the gospel mm -hmm. as fast as we can to as many people as we can to get them ready for the coming of the Lord. And Amen. what a glorious day that's going to be. Wow. Dr. Reagan, appreciate your time. I, I hope you've been enjoying this today. It, it's, it's like talking with an Old Testament prophet. But you know, in reality, even when we come to the New Testament, the Bible is very clear all the way through. There isn't this contradiction between the old and the new. Uh, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the only hope that we have, again, is not in politics. It's not in anything else but the gospel. And here we are at the end, really, of an age. We know that. We're at the end of an era for a country that started off so well. But Scripture says, to whom much is given, much is required. So uh, America's suicide, uh, sad. But yet, at the end of the day, the goal is to preach the gospel to individuals, to see people get saved, and as always, as we see the darkness grow, to be looking for the rapture. So we appreciate you watching this week. Uh, as always, keep, keep looking. You know, as Gary often says, keep looking, keep watching, because we are. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com, where you can sign up for our free email newsletter.